Now let's move on to the life course approach as a potential explanation for inequalities in health. Life course approach is the study of long-term effects of chronic disease risk of physical and social exposures during gestation, childhood, adolescence, young adulthood, and late adult life. This explanation suggests that exposures in the beginning of life play a role in initiating disease process before the, the disease manifests as overt pathology. Early events on life combined to influence physical health and person's ability to maintain it over time. The life course approach perspective on health sees a person's current biological status as a marker of their past social exposure position. Well, uh, early evidence on the life course approach came from the geographic correlations between past child mortality rates and current adult mortality rates in Norway. The finds suggest that great poverty in childhood and adolescence followed by prosperity is a risk factor for arteriosclerotic heart disease. So poor living conditions in early years leads to a weak, weaker cohort of children and those who uh, survive carry then a lifelong vulnerability resulting in high death rates in the adulthood. Uh, an important concept when studying the life course approach is the timing effect. Life course approach underlines the importance of timing in studying the development of chronic disease, since many risk factors have their own natural history. Time effect is the specific period in the life stage when exposure occurs, and may be also important in understanding its later effects in the etiology of chronic disease. It seeks to understand causal links between exposures and outcomes, taking into consideration the importance of timing in the disease development. Uh, chronic disease, including chronic oral disease, by their own nature, develop over a relatively long period of time. That is, there are time lags between the exposure, disease initiation, and clinical recognition. This suggests that exposures in the beginning of life play a role in initiating disease process before the disease manifests as over pathology. The aim of studying the trajectory of health and illness over the lifetimes is to elucidate the role of social inequality as well as biological behavior and psychosocial process that operate along individual's life course or across generation to influence the development of disease risk. Uh, life course approach does not, deny the, does not deny the importance of conventional risk factors. Rather, its purpose is to study the contribution of social societal process, such as social deprivation, poverty, and social mobility as early life factors jointly with the, these later life factors to identify risk and protect, protective process across the life course. The connection between poor socioeconomic position, harmful environment, and behavioral risk factors ac across lifespan is complex and can affect our, our health. In this example on the life course explanation, for adult lung disease. Early exposures such as poor childhood socioeconomic status and adult environmental exposures like uh, air pollution are related to lung disease at later life. Uh, 
The purpose of the life course epidemiology is to build and test uh, theoretical models that postulate pathways linking exposures across the life course to later life health outcomes. Uh, these models explicitly require the temporal ordering of exposure and their interrelationships across the life. Four broad uh, hypothetical models that can operate for exposures acting at different points across the life course have been proposed. They are the critical period model, the critical period model with later life effect modifiers, the accumulation of risk model, and the chains of risk model. Uh, the critical period model pays attention to the timing of an exposure and assumes that the irreversible changes in body system that occur during the particular vulnerable phase of life, usually during uh, the early development, have implications for later life. Uh, the basic critical period model, also known as a biological program or as a latency model, underlies the fetal origins of adult disease hypotheses. For example, the development of neural tube in very early pregnancy is um, one example. Although this is a biological process, the difficulty in a low-income household of maintaining an intake of vitamin, uh, not just for a daily life, but also for a critical period during the pregnancy, produce sharp gradients in the narrow tube defects. This graph uh, highlights the positive association between lower height at seven years, and uh, which is a biological marker of growth, and the increased odds for being unemployed for more than one year between 22 and 32 years old. We can see that the lower the seven-year-old children, the greater the chance of being uh, unemployed adults. The critical period model with later life effect modifiers is, uh, can be considered as an, as an expanded version of the critical period model uh, and includes the possibility of exposures in early life interacting with later life exposures, thereby uh, enhancing or decreasing the risk of chronic disease in the later life. This model can be described as a critical period with later effect <coughs> modifiers. For instance, uh, the risk of uh, cardiovascular disease in mild life of those with low birth weight could be due to the interactive effects of low birth weight on the motor system together with a more inactive lifestyle. The transition from school to work may be regarded as having similar importance for social development. People who enter less well-paid employment are also more likely to encounter work insecurity and physical and chemical hazards at work, to live in less well-constructed housing in a more polluted neighborhoods, and to retire on no more than the basic state pension. At each stage, social and economic disadvantage can push the individual another step down an etiological pathway towards established chronic illness. In this example, uh, workers from lower occupational status show the lower earnings and more injuries and more unemployment. The next model is the accumulation of risk model. Uh, the accumulation of different types of exposures such as environmental, socioeconomic, and behavioral may cause long-term damage. The exposure risk can be either independent, as illustrated in model A, or clustered, as in model B. The latter is known as accumulation model 
with risk clustering. Life course epidemiology shares with social epidemiology a particular interest in exposure that clusters because they are often related to individuals or family socioeconomic position in the society. The chain of risk model refers to a sequence of linked exposures that raise disease risk because one bad experience or exposures tend to lead to another and then another and so on. It's, it is possible to conceive a two different types of chains of risk. In the model in figure C is that each exposure not only increases the risk, the risk for of subsequent ex, subsequent exposure, but also has an independent effect on disease risk, irrespective of the later exposure. When each adverse experience increases the risk in a cumulative in a cumulative fashion. This is called an addict addictive effect and may be a special case of the accumulation model. Figure D is an alternatively way of thinking. Early exposures have uh, no effect on the disease risk without a final link in the chain that precipitates disease onset. Such a trigger effect describes the situation when it's only the final link in the chain that has a marked effect on disease risk. Individual biological development takes place within a social context which structures like life uh, change so that advantages and disadvantages tend to cluster cross-sectionally and accumulate longitudinally. Exposure to an environmental hazard is likely to be combined with more other hazards, and these exposures are likely to accumulate over the course of life. A person who, whose working environment is free of hazard is likely to resi reside in a good quality housing, to live in an area with little air pollution, to have access and leisure time to exercise, and to have income that permits a health diet. In contrast, someone who is exposed to a work stress is a great risk for occupying a damp and inadequately heated house, or being exposed to industrial and tra traffic air pollution in the air of residence, and of earning an income that restricts dietary choice. Social organization also structures uh, advantage and disadvantage longitudinally. Advantage and disadvantage is one phase of the life course is likely to be to have been preceded by and to be succeeded by a similar advantage and disadvantage in other phase phase of life. Uh, for example, a child raised in an affluent home is likely to succeed educationally, which will favor entry to a more privileged sectors of labor market, where an occupation pension scheme will, be, will provide financial security in older age. Uh, at other extreme, a child from the advantage home is likely to achieve few educational qualifications and leave in school early to enter in, in the unskilled labor market where low paid and hazard work combined with no occupation pension. Uh, when we think about life course approach and oral health, initially we may recognize what are the characteristics of oral health that make the ideal condition to study using the life course approach. So we can see that both dental caries and the periodontal disease share these features. They are both chronic conditions 
they are cumulative conditions in terms of extent and severity. Uh, we can measure them in uh, using valid, valid and reliable uh, instruments. They are both conditions with at least moderate prevalence in, in most countries, and they are also uh, at, at public health importance. Uh, here we, we can see the, the life cost and oral health through the different models of explanation. And so in the critical period model, we can um, figure that uh, an exposure to herpes viral in a, in a critical period leads to shingles later on. On the critical period model with later life, uh, effect modifiers, we can see that maternal undernutrition uh, leads to low birth weight and then to obesity and then to diabetes. And we can realize that diabetes is a risk factor for periodontal disease, for instance. In the accumulation of risk model, we, we can uh, see that socioeconomic status is precedes smoking poor hygiene and infections, which all may exert a harmful effect to periodontal disease. In the chain of risk model, uh, there's a sequence of events like uh, the poor social and economic status, uh, children lives in a family with more violence, they have a more aggressive behavior and leads to dental trauma. The critical and sensitive periods for development of dental caries can be supported by three examples. In the first, uh, the low birth weight groups were, were significantly associated with greater caries scores. In the second example, uh, low birth weight babies had a higher level of dental cares at 30 years of age. And finally, uh, an inverse, inverse association between height at one year of age and dental care experience at age of six years. The accumulation of risk model and oral health is supported by um, some investigation as well. For example, oral hygiene habits, dental cares, and tooth loss, and periodontal disease at age of 26 also showed a biological gradient according to childhood socioeconomic status, with adult experience of any of those markers being lower among those of higher childhood socioeconomic status. And finally, the accumulation of risk model in oral health is supported by some studies that show that social problems in childhood were the most important predicts of gingival bleeding and traumatic dental injuries among 13 years old Brazilian adolescents. In addition, adolescents from non-nuclear family, those who reported a high level of paternal punishment and those in lower school grades had high rates of traumatic dental injuries.